Hello, beautiful internet family. My name is Dan Davis, and I'm the creative director here at dancetube.tv, as well as the Fearless Drone Academy, which is the ultimate online drone course for beginners. And in today's video, I've got the ultimate beginner drone of 2022. Now, we're still in the middle of 2022. There's still a few more months left, but I think that this drone is the perfect beginner drone. Like, the price point is phenomenal. And if you are a beginner, if you don't own a drone or if you've got a friend or a family member that you know is really keen to get a drone, um, definitely send them the link for this video. You know, even if someone you know, or even if yourself, you've, you've had all these different toy drones and you're thinking, I want something that's actually gonna hover, hold its position, is gonna be more reliable and have a decent camera, then honestly, I think this drone is the ultimate begin drone of 2022. So the drone I'm talking about is the DJI Mini SE. I've showcased it on the channel um, for many months now. I honestly think it's the best beginner drone, the best budget friendly drone for people out there, especially if you have never owned a drone before. I don't think it's smart to come in and buy yourself like, you know, a Mavic Air, you know, 2 or the Air 2S or even like the Mini 3 Pro or any, anything like that. They're great drones and if you've got the money, sure, go for it. But I think for a lot of people, it's quite a big investment to buy yourself a drone, um, especially if you've gone from like the tiny little toy drones that just don't even hover, that just stop working out of nowhere or very easily crash or lose signal or have terrible cameras on them. Like those toy drones, going from that and being interested in drones, but not like obsessed with drones, like maybe you just want to fly a little more. Maybe you want to have something a bit more reliable. Then the Mini SE is a really good starting point. It's a really good upgrade from a toy drone but it's also the perfect beginner drone, in my opinion, and I think it will be for a very long time. It's extremely affordable. You get a controller, the drone, and depending on what you get, if you get the Fly More kit, you also get the charging hub and a total of three batteries. So that's gonna last you. The, the 30 minute per battery, that's an hour and a half. Now, you're not gonna be getting 30 minutes per battery, let's say, even if you get 20 minutes, you know? 20 minutes per battery, like that's an hour of flight time for this tiny little drone, um, but such a reliable drone in all different conditions. So honestly, the best beginner drone, in my opinion, of 2022. If you've been checking out a lot of my recent content and you're brand new, you wanna get yourself a drone very soon, maybe your birthday's coming up, maybe you're planning to get a drone around the Christmas period, then I think a lot of you are probably gonna be looking at like the Mini 3 Pro or looking even at the Mini 2 or the, you know, the Mavic Air 2, for example, all fantastic drones in their own right. And, you know, you're gonna be happy really with whatever drone you get, because every DJI drone I have had, every experience I've had, I've never had any issues, never had them crash, never had them fail on, on me, you know, never had any major bugs or issues. I've definitely heard of other reports from people saying they've had issues with different drones, not just DJI drones, uh, but just me personally, I've been very lucky with all the drones I've had, and DJI has been extremely reliable for me. Now with the Mini SE here, it's a tiny little product, as you can see. This could just slip into your pocket. It really doesn't weigh much at all. It's obviously under 250 grams, all of the Mini drones from DJI are under 250 grams. So that's one of the major benefits, especially if you live in one of those countries where there are really strict rules and regulations. The micro drones or the sub 250 gram drones uh, normally allow you to slip underneath those rules and regulations and still be able to fly this drone as technically a toy, but have all of the kind of relatively advanced features of the DJI drones. Even though the Mini SE is still kind of technically a toy, in a lot of countries it's actually classified as a toy drone or a micro drone. And yes, there are certain things like the back flap door is very cheap and some of the materials kind of feel a little bit lightweight and cheap and flimsy, but I promise you this thing can handle the most intense winds. Like it's actually got a scale five wind rating, which is the same as the Mini 2 and pretty much the Mini 3 Pro. Like the Mini 3 Pro has slightly better wind rating, but still very, very similar here. So the fact that this guy can handle up to 10.5 meter per second winds, that's a scale five wind rating. It can actually handle some intense winds. Even though it's such a tiny little thing, it does a fantastic job. It's also got a really nice camera on it. So for a lot of people out there, if you're coming, like I said, from a toy drone, if you're coming from something that has probably a 720p camera, if not like a 480p camera, and you're coming to something like this, like more of a, 
I don't want to say professional because it really is a beginner drone. It's got everything you need as a beginner, um, but it's got a 2.7K camera on it. So coming from a toy drone or never owning a drone before, the video quality is going to be great. You know, checking it out on your phone, uploading it to your socials, sharing it with friends and family, all that kind of stuff. It's going to be great. Even if you want to start uploading some video content to YouTube, filming in 2.7K or even 1080p, the video quality is fine and you're going to be happy with what you're capturing out of this. Now that's for the people out there who are beginners or who are upgrading from a toy drone. If video quality is really important to you, um, then you might not be as impressed because it is a relatively small sensor, only goes up to 2.7K, you don't get the 4K out of it. But for most people who are beginners, you're going to be well and truly impressed with what you're going to get from this camera system. It also has a 12 megapixel sensor, so you capture 12 megapixel stills. Photos look great as well. Again, for the hobbyist or for the beginner out there, it's going to be everything you need in a drone. Another really big calling card for people is the actual range that you're going to get from the drone. Now, this is a very basic controller, does the job. I love that you actually get the antennas. A lot of the newer controllers don't even give you this option. You can adjust the antennas and position them in a way to get more range out of the drone. Now, it does say you get about four kilometers of range, which is fine, especially if you're a beginner, you actually need to keep your drone in line of sight. So if you're keeping your drone in line of sight and you're following the rules, four kilometers is gonna be well and truly enough. One thing to keep in mind though, is where are you going to be flying your drone? Like think about if this is your first drone or if you're only just upgrading from a toy drone, are you gonna be flying in like a suburban area? Is it gonna be really densely packed with signals from all different Wi-Fi routers? Then you might have some issues with the reception because this is using advanced Wi-Fi. You get four kilometers of range, but with all of those signals, you might not get that much. Again, you need to keep it in line of sight, so you should not even be getting close, even to like, you know, 600 meters away. At that point, it's very hard to see the drone. So you really need to keep it in line of sight. So if you're flying legally, you're gonna have no issues. The other thing is it's relatively boring to film suburban areas. So you really should be going somewhere, a coastline or a bushy area, somewhere where there's like no one around. That's normally where you're gonna find some unique stuff. Suburban areas are relatively boring to film with the drone. So I would recommend if you're gonna get the drone, the Mini SE, really consider where you're gonna be flying and if range is gonna be a problem for you. Another thing for beginners out there, most likely if you've had a toy drone in the past, the camera system is fixed. So it literally just sits in a position like that. Sometimes it's built into the actual body. So if the drone's moving like that, then the camera doesn't have stabilization and the footage is gonna look awkward. Like I said, it's probably 480p or 720p video. A lot of the time, the toy drones you wouldn't even use for social media content, maybe, but probably not, you know? Where this is, like I said, 2.7K, 12 megapixel sensor, but it also has a three axis gimbal. So that means on three different axis, it can uh, counteract and stabilize the footage. So again, level five wind rating or scale five, which is 10.5 meter per second winds, insane winds. And even when the drone is flying like this, like you'll see it as it's flying side to side or awkwardly, you know, back and forth, trying to actually maintain its position, which it does a fantastic job of. The footage is just rock steady, just bang on, doesn't even look like it's windy. So again, if this is your first time getting a drone or if it's coming from a toy drone, that is going to impress you and it's gonna be a major leap and a major like exciting starting point for a lot of people out there. You might've seen a lot of the Mini 3 content all over YouTube and on my channel as well, if you've subscribed for a while now. Um, and it really is a great drone. You know, it's got three-way obstacle avoidance. It's got active track on it, so it can track you from the actual DJI Fly application. And it does a bunch of really cool things. But with that being said, the Mini SE, which again is the ultimate beginner drone, it can still track you. All you need to do is get a third-party application. I've done a bunch of content on the channel. There are three like distinct ones that I've done content on. The Maven application, Lightchi, and DroneLink all have following modes as well as waypoint. That means that your Mini SE goes from a very basic beginner drone to a relatively advanced drone because it can now follow you and you can also set up waypoints and plan missions that can actually be repeated time and time again. The Mini SE itself doesn't actually have any obstacle avoidance, so you really need to keep that in mind, like fly very carefully knowing that there's no obstacle avoidance on it. It's only got a vision positioning system down the bottom here just to kind of let the drone know when it's getting close to the ground. 
but it doesn't have any like obstacle avoidance sensors. It won't be able to dodge anything or do anything like that. So you can set it up in the follow mode. And honestly, from my experiences, the following mode is a lot more consistent and reliable than active track purely because it doesn't actually need to be able to see you. Like it's just tracking a signal. So even if you go underneath trees, it can continue tracking you. When I think about the Mini 3 Pro and its performance with the active track, it did a great job. But you know, I was on my girlfriend's bike and I was just cruising along and it would lose me because like trees would get in the way or it had to be relatively close to me. I couldn't have it far away because it was like, well, I don't know where you are, I've lost you. But with the Mini SE, if you've got one of those third party apps and you set it up in the follow mode, you can have it like 30, 40 meters away from you and then you can, you know, ride underneath trees. It completely loses you visually. It can't see you, the camera can't see you, but it's tracking that signal. So it's just gonna continue following you and not stop at all. So honestly, in my opinion, the follow mode is more reliable and more robust than active track. Like I said, active track, you have to be closer and you also have to have clear visual line of sight. So I would say that the Mini SE, even though it doesn't have obstacle avoidance, you can still get some really clean tracking shots and it does a fantastic job in the following mode. You can also choose the direction you wanna follow the subject from. You could have it following from the front, the side or the back. And that's something that you can't get with the Mini 3 Pro. The other cool thing is that you can set up waypoints. That means that I can set specific like pinpoints on a map and choose how I want the drone to actually follow that mission for me. Again, something you can't have on the Mini 3 Pro just yet, that SDK hasn't been released and probably won't be released for a little while now. So with the Mini SE, you can lock all of those pro features straight away. You just have to buy a third party app. You then have your drone and you can have following mode, waypoints, You've got a 2.7K camera, you know, great uh, wind rating on it, great gimbal, everything. Like it's a really solid beginner drone and it does a fantastic job of holding its position no matter how the wind is hitting it. Like I said, one of the major problems that a lot of people have probably addressed about the Mini SE is the range. Um, and yes, you know, I've said that it's been great for me, but that's not going to be the case for everyone. So if range is really important to you, or if you think that there's gonna be a lot of signals and you think that the advanced Wi-Fi from the Mini SE is gonna be a problem, then you might wanna look at some other drones and I do have a bunch of content on the channel. But if you don't think it's gonna be a problem and you think you're gonna be flying in some you know, open areas without too many signals, then you're gonna be fine with this. It's gonna do a great job. And like I said, I've never had any issues with it dropping out. If you are a beginner drone pilot, if you're about to pick up a drone or you know someone that really wants to buy a drone, then like I said at the beginning, I actually do run the ultimate online drone course for beginners. So definitely check that out. If you're feeling a little bit nervous or anxious about your first couple of flights, it can be pretty nervous out there. So, you know, make sure that you've got everything down and you're prepared for those initial flights. And that's really what the drone course is about. It's preparing you for every situation and every environment. So if you do want to check it out, go to the fearlessdrone.academy. You can use the code DANSTUBE to save 10% off the course. The whole point of this video is just really to show you that you don't have to get the latest and greatest. Like they always do a great job of marketing it and making it sound amazing, but you really don't need the latest and the greatest. You can be just as happy with the Mini SE and you know a third party application that then unlocks some more pro features for you that's gonna do the job for so many people out there. And just remind yourself that you probably don't need, you know, a larger drone or the latest drone that's coming out. Like the Mini SE is a really good beginner drone for people out there. And, you know, I've had so many people commenting on my other Mini SE videos, and they've told me how happy they've been with that drone. Um, even people who have got other drones, you know, more high-end drones, they've decided to buy the Mini SE because it's a really fun mini drone. You know, you can get in tighter gaps. It feels different to fly. It just feels a lot more, I don't know, like there's less inhibitions. Like you just feel like you can do whatever with it because it's so nimble and small and you don't feel as like restrained almost when you're flying it, which is just my experiences, but others have definitely reflected on that as well. I think it's a really cool beginner drone for a lot of people. Um, so yeah, don't feel like you have to get the latest and greatest. Really assess what you're gonna be using the drone for. If you've got a friend out there, family member, someone that's considering a drone, you know, send them this video. Let them know that a mini drone that's budget friendly and beginner friendly can do the job and you can save a bunch of money. That money can then go towards like, you know, the DJI Care Refresh, for example, or other accessories, and you can save some money. You don't have to spend a bunch of money on the latest and greatest drone. 
And it also gives you a chance to really play around with drones at a relatively affordable price point and just gives you a chance to get a taste of it. And then later on down the track, maybe then you consider something a bit more expensive and a bit more high grade, but you're gonna be perfectly fine with the Mini SE. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate all the amazing support and I'll chat to you in the next one. Peace.